In a world painted with the shimmering hues of celluloid dreams, there are those films that etch themselves into the tapestry of our memory, creating a timeless connection between the silver screen and our very souls. Among these, a glint of cinematic brilliance emerges from the annals of 1964 a year that breathed life into a phenomenon that would forever be dubbed Goldfinger. As you journey back to that fateful encounter with the celluloid masterpiece, the echoes of Shirley Bassey's haunting vocals reverberate through the corridors of your mind. The iconic theme song, a pulsating heartbeat of espionage, and the lure heralded your initiation into a world where secret agents danced with danger, and luxury was the norm. Do you recall the thrill of witnessing Sean Connery's James Bond, an embodiment of charisma and sophistication, maneuver his way through a treacherous landscape? The film's pulse-pounding moments are woven into your consciousness the unforgettable scenes that unravel the tale of villainy and grandiosity, and the suave British agent's heart-stopping showdowns that left you hanging on the precipice of your seat. But ah, uh, it wasn't just the gripping plot that captivated you. It was also the glittering sheen of auric goldfinger's insidious plan. The infamous laser scene, a tense game of life and death, showcased the peril of a man who dared to defy the antagonist's twisted ambition. Every frame of this cinematic treasure resided in your memory, a treasure trove of imagery that has been indelibly etched, creating a nexus between you and the timeless allure of Goldfinger. And now, as the reel of reminiscences unspools, let's delve into some enigmatic facts that weave an intricate tapestry behind the scenes of this iconic movie. From serendipitous casting choices to unexpected challenges that birthed cinematic magic, these revelations paint a vivid backdrop to the brilliance that is Goldfinger. In a strategic move to secure the iconic role of Pussy Galore, producers Harry Saltzman and Albert R. Broccoli displayed their determination by scripting actress Honor Blackman's judo skills into the storyline of the 1964 film Goldfinger. Blackman's portrayal of the strong and alluring character became an indelible part of the James Bond legacy. The cinematic allure of Goldfinger extended beyond the silver screen. The film's impact reached the pages of the English Daily Express newspaper from October 3, 1960 to April 1, 1961, as the story was adapted into a gripping comic strip. Crafted by Henry Gamage and illustrated by John McCluskey, the comic strip found worldwide syndication and was even reprinted in 2004. Furthermore, the menacing figures of Goldfinger and Ajab found themselves in the realms of Alan Moore's League of Extraordinary Gentlemen comic book a testament to their enduring influence. Amidst the glamour and intrigue, even Sir Sean Connery, the embodiment of Bond himself, was not immune to the subtleties. During filming, Connery, who was married to Diane Silento at the time, concealed his wedding ring beneath a discreet flesh-colored bandage. This detail, captured in certain production stills, offers a glimpse into the lengths taken to maintain the seamless illusion of the suave secret agent. Goldfinger, a film that continues to resonate with audiences worldwide, not only solidified its place in cinematic history, but also left an indelible mark on various mediums. From the silver screen to the newspaper pages and even into the panels of comic books, its allure endures, forever tied to the legacy of the 1964 classic. Beatles, Bond, and Goldfinger unearthing connections in the grand tapestry of cinematic history. Few films stand as iconic as the 1964 James Bond classic, Goldfinger. Amidst its glitzy espionage and suave maneuvers, the movie hides intriguing links to the world beyond the silver screen, forming a web that intertwines the Beatles, MI5 intrigue, and a British spy's rise to stardom. One enigma lies in the evolution of character names. Tilly and Jill Masterton, pivotal figures in Ian Fleming's novel, underwent a transformation for the film. Their surname morphed into Masterson, purportedly inspired by Sir John Masterman, an esteemed Oxford Don and former MI5 operative. A cryptic nod, perhaps, to the hidden currents of espionage that Bond navigates with his signature finesse. Yet, it's the Beatles' connection that leaves aficionados raising their eyebrows. In a quip that reverberates through time, Sean Connery's Bond remarks that serving Dom Perignon above a certain temperature is akin to enduring the Beatles without earmuffs. A playful jab at the Fab Four's burgeoning cultural influence. Astonishingly, years later, Paul McCartney's band Wings lent their musical prowess to the Bond universe with the theme for live 
and let die, showcasing a surprising camaraderie. Arbor Bach, an enchanting presence in the spy who loved me, found her own link to the Beatles family. She tied the knot with Ringo Starr, adding a dash of romance to the transatlantic saga. Even the mellifluous strains of Shirley Bassey's title theme song bore a twist. Though credited to Beatles maestro George Martin, the invisible hand of John Barry orchestrated its creation, a symphonic union of musical legends. But it's not just the harmonious echoes of the Beatles that resonate. Box office thunder roared as Goldfinger captured hearts in wallets, drawing in 130 million ticket buyers. A feat that propelled Sean Connery to a pinnacle unseen by any British male star, a commanding claimant to the throne atop Quigley Publications' money-making stars poll in 1965, emblematic of his silver screen charisma. Amid the dazzling tango of espionage and intrigue, Goldfinger spins threads that tether Bond, the Beatles, and British cinema itself. A convergence of creativity and popularity that carved its name into the annals of cinematic legend. And there, in the midst of the secret lives and golden moments, lies a tale that entwines the mastery of James Bond, the melodies of the Beatles, and the allure of a certain Goldfinger. Rolls Royce revs up the pitch, a quirk behind Goldfinger's gilded villain in the glitzy world of James Bond where luxury cars and nefarious plots intertwine. One peculiar connection stands out from the rest. Gert Frobe, the actor who famously portrayed the cunning Auric Goldfinger in the 1964 cinematic classic Goldfinger, had an unexpected affinity for the world's most beloved sport, football, or soccer as it's known on this side of the pond. Upon stepping into the enigmatic shoes of Goldfinger, Frobe was confronted with an offbeat request from the producers. Intrigued by his private interests, they inquired about his hobbies. With an air of simplicity that one might not associate with the film's intricate storyline, Frobe revealed his passion for football. The result, a weekly spectacle that could rival any of Goldfinger's extravagant stunts. Every Saturday, a lavish Rolls Royce would glide up to Frobe's London Hotel a sleek testament to his villainous on-screen persona. The purpose, to chauffeur him to the very heart of his off-screen passion, football matches. Frobe, embodying the playful irony that often underpins the Bond series, found himself being ferried to weekend games in a vehicle that exuded opulence, a stark contrast to the sport's grassroots spirit. As the world delves deeper into the enigmatic realm of Goldfinger, this anecdote of a Rolls Royce on a soccer mission adds yet another layer of intrigue to the film's legacy. A reminder that even the most iconic characters are shaped by the quirkiest of interests. And so, the next time you watch the glimmering spectacle of Goldfinger, remember the parallel world where Gert Froh, the man behind the gold-obsessed villain, cheered on his favorite football team, carried in luxury to the roar of the stadium. Unveiling the unseen, astonishing secrets behind 1,964 seconds Goldfinger in the realm of cinematic espionage. Few names resonate as vividly as James Bond, and among the iconic installments in the series, Goldfinger stands as a shining jewel. Beneath the glitz and glamour, however, lie concealed anecdotes that offer fresh insights into the movie's intrigue. Conceived in the 1960s, the Aston Martin DB5, driven by Bond himself, attained legendary status. Yet, little is known about the covert arsenal that never saw the silver screen. The car's hidden potential included a cache of unrevealed gadgetry, front and back over riders for ramming, a concealed weapon tray, headlights housing triple spiked nail clusters, a covert radio telephone, and an unexpected thermos harboring a built-in hand grenade. His gadgetry dreams, though unrealized on screen, tantalized the imagination, shedding light on the ingenuity behind the scenes. The film's opening credits, a visual symphony in themselves, curiously merge scenes from Goldfinger with snippets from earlier Bond escapades. Amid this convergence emerges Margaret Nolan, known for her role as Dink in the film, who, projected upon with these scenes, commands an extended appearance, dwarfing even Shirley Eden's on-screen time. In a twist, the blue bikini adorning Nolan during this sequence sets her apart from Eaton, emblematic of the meticulous detailing woven into every frame. Yet, beneath the surface of Gert Frobe's portrayal of Auric Goldfinger lies a paradox. Despite Frobe's jovial disposition, his role as Goldfinger enshrouded him in an enduring perception of cold ruthlessness. In his own words, I am a big man, and I have a laugh to match my size. The ridiculous thing is that since I played Goldfinger in the James Bond film, 
There are some people who still insist on seeing me as a cold, ruthless villain, a man without laughs. The actor's frustration captures the indelible conflation of role and reality, illustrating the nuances actors often grapple with after breathing life into iconic characters. As we revisit the cinematic gem that is Goldfinger, these revelations illuminate the meticulous craftsmanship and unforeseen complexities woven into its fabric. The allure of an unexplored Aston Martin arsenal, the mesmerizing opening credits, and the enigmatic perceptions surrounding Gert Frobe's portrayal only deepen the mystique of this timeless classic. Intrigue, it seems, persists even beyond the confines of the silver screen. As the credits roll on our journey through the glitzy and action-packed world of Goldfinger, I can't help but be reminded of how a single film has the power to shape memories and spark connections across time. Whether you first experienced the mesmerizing allure of the silver screen in a cozy theater, or on a snug couch at home, Goldfinger has etched itself into the cultural fabric, leaving an indelible mark on generations of movie enthusiasts. As you've revisited this iconic masterpiece, perhaps you found yourself immersed in the suave sophistication of James Bond, his daring escapades juxtaposed against the cunning villainy of Auric Goldfinger. Maybe the unforgettable, larger-than-life scenes unfolded in your mind's eye like cherished paintings, each frame holding a unique emotion or thrill. Goldfinger is more than just a film, it's a portal to our own histories and experiences. What were you doing when you first encountered this cinematic gem? Did you cheer for Bond's remarkable gadgets, or perhaps marvel at the impeccable tailoring of his suits? Was it the timeless theme song that resurfaced, evoking a sense of nostalgia and intrigue? I invite you to take a moment and delve into your personal connection with Goldfinger to unearth the memories and emotions it has stirred within you. Your perspective matters, and your recollections are a part of the intricate mosaic that makes up the tapestry of Goldfinger. I encourage you to share your favorite moments, cherished memories, or insightful thoughts about the film. By doing so, you contribute to a dialogue that transcends time and connects movie lovers across the globe. Thank you for joining me on this cinematic exploration and for allowing the magic of Goldfinger to resonate once more. Your time and enthusiasm are deeply appreciated. Here's to the beauty of shared experiences and the enduring allure of timeless cinema. With cinematic admiration,